Hi, I'm Junior with Keystone RV Center. Today we're going to be winterizing this Jayco J Flight. Now this is going to apply for most Jayco products. We're going to have another video when we get into the higher end fifth wheels that have its own water uh, main valves and things like that. So for the Jayco J Flight, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to hit the pressure relief valve on the water heater and then I'm going to take the drain plug out of the bottom here. There we go. Wasn't much in this tank. This is a customer's unit of ours. He stopped by, asked if we could do a winterize. We needed to do a video. And just for reference, this is a 15 16 socket. Um, but we're going to go ahead and finish up this winterize. We're going to jump around to the other side. We're going to hit the low point drains. And then we're going to go in and we're going to start the water heater bypass and things like that. Let's take a look at the other side, guys. All right, now there's two sets of drain valves. There's one here at the very back on this floor plan, and this is 287. Um, so the drain valves are going to come down. They're going to be a blue and red line, obviously hot and cold at that point. The valves will come, the lines will come down like that, and there'll be a valve in there. And it's sitting like this right now, which means the valve is closed. We're going to rotate it so the handle is pointed straight up and down, allow any water to drain out. So we're going to do this one, then we're going to get up to the front and do those. That's one. That's two. I think most of the water was already drained out of this unit, but we're still going to go ahead and finish up the other side. So we're right in front of the axles here. We're going to reach up inside of here. This is going to be the low point drain for our fresh water tank, which is empty right now. I'm not getting any water out of there, so we're good there. Let's go ahead inside and we're going to bypass the hot water heater and we're going to start the process of using the water pump to draw antifreeze through the system. Let's go inside. So we've accessed this uh, combination between underneath the bunk bed on the bottom bunk and the outside storage compartment on this 287. Um, there is a blue line coming into the bottom of the hot water heater. We're going to change the direction of that valve. Then we're going to change the direction of the white valve at the top coming in uh, between a tease between the red and the blue line. We're going to flip both those valves and then that will bypass our hot water heater tank for us. So luckily for me, I couldn't find the water pump initially, but the dog was able to track it down. What the dog did was went around and listened for the water pump to vibrate whenever you turn the water pump on. You'll hear just a bzzz. On this particular model, it's underneath the kitchen sink. Now it's behind this access panel, so either me or the dog's going to pull this off, and since the dog doesn't have opposable thumbs, I guess it's me. Now, Jayco already puts a water pump bypass kit on these units to start with. So at this point, we're going to pull out the supplied hose. We're going to turn this one valve right here. Mark, you got a good light on that or do I need to put a flashlight? You good? All right. Turn this one valve. Take our jug of antifreeze. I thought the dog was going to cut the top open for me, but again, I guess it's that whole opposable thumb thing. All right. Now we're just going to drop our hose into our gallon of antifreeze, making sure we get this the whole way to the bottom. And again, guys, we touched on it in the last section, but make sure you've closed your low point drain to this, this point. Now we're just going to turn our water pump on. We see pink going through the line, which is good, which means everything's flowing the way it should be. We should hear it come to pressure. Perfect. Now, we're going to start with the cold side. Got a little bit coming out of there. Now we'll go to the hot. I'm going to shut that off. Make sure I'm not going too low on my antifreeze at any one point. There it starts to go. Alright, so now I'm going to come back to the cold make sure I got a good flow out of there. And I do. That's nice. getting close to the bottom of that first jug 
So what we're going to do, go ahead and pull that out. Let this air pocket run up, and that will reduce the amount of dripping you get out of the line. Go ahead and get this next jug ready. And again, we know there's some guys out there that'll tell you, you can do it with two gallons, you can do it with one gallon. If you buy one gallon, it should last you 10 years. We're gonna tell you, get three gallons and just do it that way. That way you know you have enough. No matter what the cost is for the antifreeze, it's cheaper than buying the parts. All right, so we've got good flow out of there. Now let's jump back here to the bathroom. Start with the sink, pull the drain plug out, going cold first, and you can see that once you get antifreeze in the line, it does not take you long to get everything through. Go to the toilet. That's good color coming out of there, let's just check it. Toilet valves are tricky, so I like to use a little bit extra. And last but not least, last but not least on the inside, we still got to go outside. So there is solid pink coming out of there. That's pretty good coming out of there. All right. All right, next we're gonna go outside. We're gonna do the outside shower and the uh, um, city water connection. But before then, I think we're gonna go ahead and change out to that third gallon of antifreeze. That way we make sure we have enough outside. We'll see you guys outside in a second. Now on this 287, we're gonna come outside and this is gonna be the last two steps of winterizing the water lines. We're still gonna to have to dump the tanks after this, but as we already saw, the fresh tank's empty. We're just gonna empty the black and the gray. So we're just gonna turn the cold side on. Let that run clear. Mark, you get in that infect camera? He never talks. Just gives me thumbs ups. All right, I'm gonna move that around on the ground a little bit, make sure I got good solid pink coming out of there. Remember guys, this third gallon's the, the bonus gallon. So we're gonna go inside after this. We're gonna flow all the water valves a little bit more just to make sure they're all good. This last step outside is one you don't wanna be standing in front of. Now. This guy is gonna to need to be popped out. I find it easy if we just work it to the side, we can get it sideways like this and pull it straight out. Then, do not stand directly in front of here. You're gonna see a little white nipple inside of there. You're gonna depress that. I'm gonna move this up out of the way a little bit. And it's gonna blast against that. Mark, you may wanna move the camera a little bit because I'm worried about the splash. Good solid paint coming out of there. Yeah, don't put the kids directly in front of that. So, put that away. We're going to put that, oh, put the plug back in. Then we're going to put the uh, shower hose away after we wipe it down, wipe the power cord down, go back inside, and we're going to uh, flow all the valves a little bit more, then take it down to the dump station, empty anything in the tanks left. Other than that, guys, you're pretty much done winterizing. Guys, if you have any questions, give us a call, 1-800-232-3279. I'm going back inside. I'm going to chill out with the puppy on the couch for a little bit, make Eric think I'm actually working today. Talk to you all soon. Have a great day. All right, guys, we're back inside. We're hanging out. Got the puppy with me. Now, at this point, I'm going to take those little bit of remaining three gallons. There's like that much in each gallon. I'm going to dump them down the low point drain or dump them down the... Uh, sink drains, the sink drain in the bathroom, and the shower drain, just to make sure I got plenty of antifreeze through there. I've already ran the faucets a little bit extra, 
So at this point, I'm going to act like we're doing some work for what do you think we get away with? 45 minutes, Mark, before Eric starts asking questions? He's not, and so let's go with that. So we're just going to chill out in here. Mr. Smiley, thank you for letting us borrow your unit for the day. Um, I'll shoot you a text, let you know once we got everything uploaded onto the website. Guys, give us a call, 1-800-232-3279 at Keystone RV Center if you have any questions. Make sure you subscribe. Comment down below if you guys have any questions. Take care. Have a great day.